Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Cantonese ebook before it's gone. Today's topic is how to speak more of your target language, specificity, and can-do checklists. How much of your target language can you speak right now? If your answer is not much, there is a way to speak more, even if you're learning on your own. In this episode, you'll discover one, how specific goals can get you speaking more, and two, how you can apply this learning tactic with our learning program or any other resource. But first, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Going Sightseeing Conversation Cheat Sheet. What country or city would you like to visit? With this PDF cheat sheet, you'll be able to talk about where you want to go and you'll master all the common words and phrases for sightseeing. Second, the Most Common Nouns PDF eBook. You'll master over 90 common nouns with this bonus PDF picture eBook you can download and review on any device. Third, can you talk about hairstyles? Would you be able to get a haircut in your target language? If not, then this one minute lesson is just what you need. Fourth, phrases to use with your doctor. I have an appointment. I don't feel well. My throat hurts. You'll learn how to say these phrases and much more. Fifth, can you talk about books in your target language? Learn how to say novel, author, thriller, and much more with this quick vocab bonus. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. How to speak more of your target language, specificity and can-do checklists. Every learner wants to speak more in their target language, and yet speaking is almost always the weakest skill for most learners. So, how do you fix this? How do you speak more? Keep watching. These tips will apply to solo learners and those with a conversation partner. First, let's put language learning aside. Let's say you wanted to speak more about a certain topic in your native language. What would that depend on? The length of that conversation depends on how much you know about that topic, right? If you don't know much, that conversation won't last long. If you know a lot, you could go on for hours. It's the same with language learning. The more words and phrases you know around a certain topic, the more you can speak. It's a top-down approach. Pick a topic, for example, weather, and work your way down. Learn the relevant words, phrases, and questions for that topic. For example, what's the weather like? It's nice weather. It's sunny. It's windy. I like sunny weather. I don't like rain. The more lines you come up with, the more you'll be able to talk about the weather in your target language. The point is, if you want to speak more, you should start with a specific topic. Sounds obvious, right? So why don't most learners do this? Most learners don't do this because they're just passively following a learning resource without going after what they specifically want. It's much easier to follow a textbook than to stop, think about what you want to talk about, and go off in that direction. Of course, you should keep using your textbook or other existing resource. You can do both. Follow a resource and pursue specific topics. But here are a few reasons why this tactic is so powerful. First, specific goals always beat vague goals. For example, between setting goals like, I wanna save money and I wanna save $50, you're more likely to succeed with the $50 goal. But because you have a specific number to look for and measure, you won't stop until that $0 becomes $10, then $20 and then 50. Same with language learning. Between I want to learn more words and I want to learn 20 words, you'll do much better with the specific goal. Second, you get to speak more sooner. You can go try the general approach of learning the 2,000 most common words, but that will take a long time and it won't get you speaking any faster. But if you pick a specific topic and get all the words and phrases for it, you'll be much better off. Three, so you know what to focus on. Again, knowing what to focus on helps you learn and progress faster. Otherwise, if you're just going through a textbook with no specific goal in mind, you'll spend months on learning a language and never see any real progress. So remember, the more specific you are with what you want, the more likely you'll get it because you'll know exactly what you're looking for. 
This is why we tell you to set small, measurable, meaning specific, monthly goals. Now, what kind of topics should you pick? That depends on you and your hobbies and interests. You can also start with common topics, like talking about yourself, your family, the weather, or your weekend plans. But to make it easy for you, here's what you can do. One, download our free PDF conversation task list. Pick a topic to start with, for example, talking about your family. Then, take lessons inside our learning program based on that topic. You'll learn practical conversations that you can use in real life. And as a result, you'll be able to talk more about your family. Two, take five or 10 minutes and write out other lines that you'd want to use, either in that conversation or questions that someone may ask you, and get them translated with the help of our Premium Plus teacher. Three, come up with your own topics that are interesting to you. Then repeat step two, come up with all the phrases, questions, and answers that could come up in that conversation. Write them out and get them translated with your Premium Plus teacher or translate them with a translation software. You could try this and it might not be perfect, but it could help you start and get you speaking a little bit more of your target language. The goal here is to be able to talk more about a specific topic and as a result, speak more of your target language. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time we'll talk about what's your real reason for learning a language? If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye! If you're learning a new language, there will be times when you'll struggle with the lesson, when you won't fully understand what you've learned, when you'll be in a rut, or when you just won't feel like you're making any progress. And that's totally normal. In this video, you'll learn what to do if you're not learning and how to overcome language learning struggles. Let's begin. Number one, understand the mindset of a successful learner. Some learners are more successful than others. A key difference between successful learners and less successful learners is in the way they approach problems. Some learners rely completely on a learning program. If there's a grammar rule or word they don't understand, they get frustrated and blame the program. They don't look for solutions. Successful learners approach problems a little differently. If they encounter a problem, they look for a solution or ask for help instead of getting frustrated. You may feel frustrated at times, especially if you're a beginner, but how you choose to react will make all the difference. Number two, set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. Most learners fail because they set big, vague goals, like, I wanna be fluent. When they realize they have no idea how to do that, they lose motivation and quit. The solution to this? Set small, measurable, realistic goals with a deadline. For example, Finish 10 audio lessons by the end of this week. Learn 20 words by the end of this week. Speak one minute of conversation by the end of this month. Listen to lessons for just five minutes a day, every day this month. Now your goals are small and realistic enough to accomplish. They're specific and measurable, so you know when you reach them and the deadline gives you a finish line. For example, either you learned all 20 words by Friday or you didn't. When you reach your goal, you gain a ton of confidence. This improves your chances of reaching your next goal because you've had experience reaching a goal and you understand the things you need to do to be successful. Number three, read along with the lesson notes and lesson transcripts. Now, what if you're doing a lesson, but you can't catch a word? Take advantage of the lesson notes and lesson transcripts and read along with the lesson. The lesson notes give you in-depth grammar and vocabulary explanations that are not available in the lesson and the lesson notes give you the word-for-word -word transcript of everything said in the lesson. So if you want to pick up every word, read the transcript. Number four, review, because repetition is the mother of all learning. If you're struggling with a particular word, grammar rule, or lesson, be sure to repeat and review it a few times, and then come back a few days later and review it again. This same principle is used in our spaced repetition flashcards. The system quizzes you on words, then re-quizzes you in three days, then in six days, and so on, 
until the word gets embedded in your long-term memory. Some things you can do right now are download the lesson and lesson notes, save the words to your word bank, or even write down the words or grammar rules, then come back to review them later. Number five, reach out to our teachers and ask questions. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can easily get in touch with your teacher and get all of your points of confusion cleared up. Or you can always leave a comment on our lessons and our teachers will get back to you. Remember, you're not alone. If you're struggling with a lesson, you can always get in touch with us. Number six, take a break and go do something else. Another thing you can do is take a break and do something else that doesn't require much thinking. There's a reason our best ideas come while in the shower or while taking a walk. While you're on a break, your brain is more relaxed and starts making connections that you couldn't see when you were focused and stressed out. It's also why coming back to review things with a fresh mind can help you better understand the lessons you've taken. Number seven, downgrade your learning routine. If you're studying for 30 minutes a day and find yourself overwhelmed, or if you suddenly find yourself busy, the best thing to do is to reduce your study routine to something easier and more manageable. If you've been learning 30 minutes a day, drop down to 10 or 15 minutes. Even five minutes is good enough because language learning success comes with consistency. Quitting and coming back every three months won't work. This brings us to our next point. Number eight, remember, learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Think about it. You can't cram for five hours and expect to remember everything you've studied. So just like with a marathon, it's okay to go slow and at your own pace, even if you're learning for just five minutes a day. Similarly, if you're having trouble understanding a grammar point or a lesson, don't let it bring you down. Learning a language is a marathon, a long-term game. The little points of confusion you have now are just small obstacles and you'll fully understand them with time. So if you're ready to finally learn a new language the fast, fun, and easy way, sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Signing up takes less than 30 seconds and you'll start speaking from your very first lesson. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. When learning a new language, we sometimes have a hard time with things like procrastination, discouragement, or failure. But don't panic. With a good strategy, you'll be able to overcome these difficulties. Are you ready to discover the four habits of successful learners? Number one, optimize your time. When learning a language, it's important to dedicate time to your studies regularly, even if sometimes it's difficult. You're busy with school, work, family, or friends, but you can spread out your learning throughout the day. Study whenever you have small gaps of time in your busy schedule. This can be when you're on the metro, on your lunch break, or while you're exercising. Our podcast learning format fits perfectly into your tight schedule. Number two, consistency with your chosen method. There are a lot of options when it comes to courses and learning materials. Switching from one method to another can confuse you and disrupt your progress. Focusing on one learning method will make a difference. Our method has been created and optimized by real teachers, so you can stick to it with confidence. Number three, use your language background. Many languages share some commonalities. You can find words that look or sound similar, or even share the same grammar structure. A little bit of language background will give you an edge while learning. Number four, study continuously. People are excited when they start learning a new language. The enthusiasm usually lasts until the first roadblock. This can lead to discouragement and procrastination. But don't burn yourself out. Learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. Don't try to learn it all at once. Break things down into more digestible chunks. Learning step-by-step -step might feel slow, but it's an efficient way to learn a language. With patience, motivation, and good resources, you'll master the language. Remember, you can't learn a language overnight, but with motivation and these daily lessons, you'll be on the road to fluency. Give it a try now. Sign up for your account. Just click the link in the description. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is, what is the way to express tenses in Cantonese? Cantonese verbs don't change form according to the tense. 
Rather, we use time words to indicate whether something will happen tomorrow, is happening now, or happens yesterday. The Cantonese language relies heavily on the use of adverbs to communicate what English and many other languages do with different verb tenses. Let's see this in more detail. First, let's see how to express the past tense. In Cantonese, we don't conjugate verbs as in English. Rather, we place a specific character after a verb to show that the action took place in the past. To indicate that you have already done an action, simply use this formula. Verb plus jaw equals to past tense. Jaw, for example, hot jaw, studied or learned, sick jaw, ate. So some of you may ask, what is the difference between sick guo and sick jaw? Generally speaking, we use jaw for a completed action, while we use guo to indicate previous experience. For example, ngo hui jaw, I went. Ngo hui guo, I have been before. Guo is the major alternate particle used to communicate aspect completion. As with the sentence, ngo hui guo Hong Kong, I have been to Hong Kong. Ngo hui guo Hong Kong. I've been to Hong Kong. While both jaw and guo are indicators of past tense, jaw stresses the neutral completion of the action, while guo emphasizes that the action had taken place in the past. Finally, let's see how to express the future tense. To express future tense in Cantonese, we usually place the character wui will in front of the verb. For example, wui hui will go. Wei sing, will it? How is it? Pretty easy, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hatsuki. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the negative verbs in Cantonese? In Cantonese, there are two main ways to negate a verb. Using one negating word over the other can change nuances greatly. Let's see how. First, what is the difference between the present tense and the past tense when you're negating? Put in a simple way, we use mm to negate action verbs in the present or future, or when speaking about habitual actions. We use mo when the action either did not happen, so past tense, or isn't complete yet. For example, ngo mm sek, I don't eat. Ngo mo sek, I didn't eat. Ngo mm sek, I don't eat. Ngo mo sek, I didn't eat. What's the sentence pattern when negating in the past tense? For example, Dim gai mu zit ngo din wa? Dim gai mu zit ngo din wa? Which, based on the context, we translated as Why didn't you answer my call? It's actually more close to Why aren't you answering my call? The pattern m mm, plus verb is negating something in a present tense or is describing a negative action as a habit or a phenomenon or that a certain action is against someone's will so they won't do it. While mo plus verb is negating something in the past tense that something wasn't done. M plus verb do not do. Mo plus verb did not do or have not done. Here are some sample sentences. M means do not. Ngo m hui gong yun. I don't go to the park. Mo means did not or have not. Ngo mo hui gong yun. I didn't go to the park. How was it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hatsuki. Hi everybody, Olivia here. Welcome to Ask a Teacher, where I'll answer some of your most common Cantonese questions. The question for this lesson is, what are the taboos I need to be careful of in Chinese culture? 
The biggest taboo in Chinese culture would be to say any word that sounds similar to say death or hong evil or unlucky, say or hong, especially on happy occasions such as New Year, birthday, or weddings. Let's get into more details. You've probably heard about the lucky and unlucky numbers in Cantonese. Let's see what they are. In Cantonese, the number four, say, sounds very similar to say, death, say, and say. Therefore, this number is considered bad luck. Many buildings do not have the 4th, 14th, 24th floors, and most people would avoid getting a phone number with 4 in it. On the other hand, the number 8, bad, sounds like bad, which means prosper and fortune, bad and fat. Therefore, this number is considered auspicious or good luck. Moreover, 18, sub bad, sounds like sub fat meaning get rich for sure. And 28 sounds like easy to get fortune. Yi sabat or ya bat, yi bat. So everyone believes that these numbers will bring good luck. Let's see if other than four and eight, there are any significance to other numbers. Number three, sam, is also considered good luck as it sounds similar to sang, meaning lively and alive. Sang and sam. Also the number six, lo, is a good number as it has the same pronunciation as lo, which means wealth and blessings, lo. On the other hand, the number seven, cha, is a bad number because it sounds similar to a swear word. And also the seventh month of the Chinese calendar is the ghost month, in which ghosts and spirits are believed to come to our world from the lower realm. Okay, let's see some other curious facts about taboos in Chinese culture. When we're talking about an empty room, house, car, etc., we should avoid using the word hong empty, hong empty, because it sounds the same as hong, which means evil and unlucky. In this case, we will use the antonym gut, gut, which means fortunate and propitious. So for empty rooms, instead of saying hong fang, we'll say gut fang. When we say the room is empty, we say gan fang gut jiao instead of gan fang hong jiao, which is a little bad luck. So gan fang gut jiao. In Hong Kong, where we can auction for cars license plates, those with the lucky numbers are always sold at a very high bidding price. For instance, in 2016, a license plate with the number 28 was sold for US 2.3 million. So how is it? Pretty interesting, right? Do you have any more questions? Leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. See you next time. Hatsuki! Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Now. Gaydim. What time? Long dim. Two o'clock. So fi. Almost. 
快啲 ，quicker， 准时 ，to be on time， 迟到 ，to be late。Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. 哎呀，就迟到啦！而家几点啊？就快两点啦。咁就要快啲啦。This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations, and finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Wait, wait, where are you going? Call me. I'm wrong. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. One. To look for. Kill. To be called or call. Bingo. Who? Da. To dial. Ngoi mai. Take out. Cho. Wrong. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. Wait, wait. Where are you going? Call me. I'm wrong. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. We've found that the best way to learn a language is to speak it from day one, and the best way to start speaking is to learn phrases that you'll use in real conversations. In this lesson, we'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, "What kind of movies do you like?" After watching this video, you'll be able to talk about movies and ask other people about their favorite kinds of movies. And if you want to learn more vocabulary, phrases, and example sentences you can use in real-life situations, click the link in the description to download your "Talking About Movies and TV" PDF cheat sheet for free. Now let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. 你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意恐怖片。
Once more with the English translation. 你中意咩类型嘅电影 ？What kind of movies do you like? 我中意恐怖片。I like horror. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, "What kind of movies do you like?" That's. 你中意咩类型嘅电影 ？Listen to it again. 你中意咩类型嘅电影？你中意咩类型嘅电影 ？This Cantonese sentence literally translates as "You like what kind of movies?" But it means "What kind of movies do you like?" Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is: 我中意 type of movie. I like type of movie. For example, I like horror. 我中意恐怖片，我中意恐怖片。Here are a few more kinds of movies you can use with the same pattern to talk about movies. Horror， 恐怖片，恐怖片。Comedy, 喜剧，喜剧。Fantasy, 奇幻片，奇幻片。Romance, 爱情片，爱情片。Let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat, or speak along with the native speakers. 你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意喜剧。你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意奇幻片。你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意爱情片。Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, "What kind of movies do you like?" You 中意咩类型嘅电影 Imagine you like comedies. Do you remember how to say comedy? 喜剧，喜剧。Say. I like comedies. Now answer the question saying that you like comedies. You like what kind of movies? What kind of movies do you like? Now imagine that you like fantasy movies. Do you remember how to say fantasy? 奇幻片，奇幻片。Say I like fantasy. 我中意奇幻片。Now answer the question saying you like fantasy movies. 你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意奇幻片。Now imagine you like romantic movies. Do you remember how to say romantic? 爱情片，爱情片。Say I like romance. 我中意爱情片。Now answer the question saying you like romantic movies. 你中意咩类型嘅电影？我中意爱情片。
In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to talk about movies. You are now able to talk about types of movies like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell us what your favorite kind of movie is. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. To watch. Yo. To move. Mai. Don't. Da m da. Okay or not. Ha. A bit. Bay. To give. Do. Also. See you. To smile. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Are you struggling to understand conversations in your target language? This video will improve your listening skills using practice dialogues. How do you know if your language skills are improving? Our team of teachers have designed a free quiz to determine your actual learning level. So click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for you. In this lesson, you'll listen to a dialogue with the text. Second, you'll review the key vocabulary, followed by the English translations. And finally, you'll review the dialogue with the text again to master what you learned. First, listen to the dialogue with the text on the screen. Now you'll hear the key vocabulary, followed by the English translation. Cannot. Number. Thanks. Bay. To give. 
电话号码。Phone number. 靓女。Pretty girl. 可以。Can. So. Hot. 电话。Telephone. Finally, let's review the dialogue again. See if you can understand more this time. 靓女，你好索。多谢。可唔可以俾你电话号码我？唔可以。This is the end of the lesson. In this lesson, you improved your listening and mastered key vocabulary for everyday life conversation. Don't forget to click the link in the description to get your free assessment and unlock lessons that are right for your learning level. Keep practicing and move on to the next lesson. Do you feel like you don't speak enough Cantonese? That you need to know more words? Then stick around. With these lessons, you'll pick up some of the most common words in just a few minutes. Now, this video is a small portion of our learning program. To get the full lessons, translations, and fluency fast study tools, click the link in the description and sign up for your free lifetime account. Hi everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to Conversational Phrases. In this lesson, you'll learn conversational phrases to answer the question, "What are you going to talk about?" After watching this video, you'll be able to answer this question and introduce a topic to give a simple speech. Now, let's take a look at some conversational phrases. Listen to the dialogue. 你要讲啲咩？我要讲我嘅兴趣。Once more with the English translation. 你要讲啲咩 ？What are you going to talk about? 我要讲我嘅兴趣。I'm going to talk about my hobbies. First of all, you'll need to learn how to say, "What are you going to talk about?" That's. 你要讲啲咩 ？Listen to it again. 你。要讲啲咩？你要讲啲咩 ？This Cantonese sentence literally translates as "You are going to talk what?" but it means "What are you going to talk about?" Now, how do you answer this question? The pattern is: 我要讲 topic. I am going to talk about topic. For example, I'm going to talk about my hobbies. 我要讲我嘅兴趣。我要讲我嘅兴趣。Here are a few more topics you can use with the same pattern. My hobbies. 我嘅兴趣，我嘅兴趣。My hobbies， 我嘅兴趣。My favorite food， 我最中意嘅食物，我最中意嘅食物。My favorite food， 我最中意嘅食物。My favorite place. 我最中意嘅地方。我最中意嘅地方。My favorite place. 我最中意嘅地方。My favorite book. 我最中意嘅书。我最中意嘅书。My favorite book. 我最中意嘅书
let's look at some examples. Listen and repeat or speak along with the native speakers. 你要讲什么? 我要讲我最喜欢的食物. What are you going to talk about? 你要讲什么? I'm going to talk about my favorite food. 我要讲我最喜欢的食物. 你要讲什么? 我要讲我最喜欢的地方. What are you going to talk about? 你要讲什么? I'm going to talk about my favorite place. 我要讲我最喜欢的地方. 你要讲什么? 我要讲我最喜欢的书. What are you going to talk about? 你要讲什么? I'm going to talk about my favorite book. 我要讲我最喜欢的书. Okay, now it's your turn. Do you remember how to say, What are you going to talk about? Imagine you're going to talk about your favorite food. Do you remember how to say, My favorite food? Say, I'm going to talk about my favorite food. Now, answer the question saying you're going to talk about your favorite food. Now, imagine you're going to talk about your favorite place. Do you remember how to say, my favorite place? 我最喜欢的地方。我最喜欢的地方。Say, I'm going to talk about my favorite place. 我要讲我最喜欢的地方。Now, answer the question saying you're going to talk about your favorite place. 你要讲什么? Now, imagine you're going to talk about your favorite book. Do you remember how to say, my favorite book? Say, I'm going to talk about my favorite book. Now, answer the question saying you're going to talk about your favorite book. 你要讲什么? In this lesson, you learned new vocabulary and phrases you can use in your everyday life to give a simple speech. You're now able to introduce a topic like a native speaker. Start by practicing in the comments below. Tell me and your fellow learners what you are going to talk about in your next speech. Lastly, don't forget to click the link in the description and download your PDF cheat sheets. You'll get useful phrases you need for everyday life for free. See you in the next lesson. Bye. Remember, here's what you can do to learn all of these words by heart. Drill these words with our spaced repetition flashcards, which will help cement these words into your long-term memory. Save them to the Word Bank, your personal vocabulary collection where you can print out your own study sheets, or review the words with our looped vocabulary slideshow and play it until you know all of the words.
So click the link in the description right now and sign up for your free lifetime account to get these lessons and study tools. Okay, today's topic is four rules for staying motivated with language learning. You're going to learn one, the mistake people make with motivation, two, the four rules for motivation, and three, how you can apply the four rules to your language learning. Do you wish you were more motivated about language learning? You watch motivational videos, you feel good for a second, but none of it sticks. This lesson may have some tips to help you. First, listen up. Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the 24-hour survival phrases cheat sheet. Traveling and want to learn a bit of the language? Then these survival phrases will help you with the first 24 hours. Second, the ultimate listening video master course. How good are your listening skills? Watch this free video master course to more easily understand native speakers. You can download it right now. Third, the 50 most common verbs all beginners must know. Do you know all of these verbs? If not, this lesson will drill the 50 most common verbs into your head. Just use the free audio slideshow tool inside. And fourth, 20 strategies for learning a language at home. Want to learn a language from the comfort of your own home? This one minute lesson gives you all the best tactics for learning languages. To get your free resources, click the link in the description below right now. They're yours to keep forever. Okay, let's jump into today's topic. Four rules for staying motivated with language learning. Want to know how to really stay motivated? Then listen closely to these four rules. These rules might be a little different from the advice that you often hear. Ready? Rule number one, action comes first. Are you the type of person who prefers to make things happen? Or are you the type that waits for things to happen to you? One of the best ways to stay motivated with language learning is to not think about motivation. Instead, take action and start learning. The mistake that most people make is that they have this backwards. They think they should wait to feel motivated first and then start learning. But really, it's the other way around. First, you do a language lesson. You learn a basic conversation. Then you do another. And then you start feeling like you can do more and learn more. You see results. So results bring motivation. Thinking about motivation does not bring motivation. Thinking about motivation is like reading an article about how to go outside for a run instead of actually going outside for a run. So action comes first. Rule number two, always have an outside influence. It's very easy to lose motivation if you're learning language alone. So what do you do? Here are some examples. You get a study buddy. You hire a tutor. You join a meetup group. You plan a trip to a country where people speak that language or you sign up for a proficiency test like many language learners do. Why do this? Because now you have other people depending on you. You have outside factors that keep you going with the language. For example, if you signed up for a language proficiency test, you know you have a few months to study and you have to take the test on a certain date. Someone is going to pass or fail you. This is a lot more motivating than learning alone. If you're learning with our program, you can get your own teacher with the Premium Plus plan. They'll hold you accountable, send you homework, and give you feedback. If you have a study buddy, well, now you have someone that expects you to show up and improve. And if they're better than you, that should give you extra motivation because you wanna be at their level. So get some outside influence. The next rule is rule number three. Always have a go-to study method. When you arrive at work or the gym, or when you start your homework, you always have that one thing you do first, right? What do you do? For example, with work, maybe the very first thing you do is check emails. Then you check your tasks for the week. After that, you get started. Well, you need to make the same kind of habits with language learning. You need a go-to study method that you're comfortable with, an easy starting point. And this totally depends on you and your style. Choose something you enjoy. Some people listen to audio lessons. Some people like flashcards. For some people, writing is easy. You can write out song lyrics and translate them. It's up to you. The point is you should give yourself an easy first step to get you started and get into the flow of learning. If you're learning with our program, you can start with the word of the day email or do a quick three minute audio lesson. You can copy out the lesson dialogue, read through the lesson notes, or even easier, just review and re-listen to a lesson you took the day before. If you have your own go-to study method, you're already miles ahead of most learners. Leave a comment and tell us about it. And finally, rule number four, 
always be working on something. So here, I want you to stop and think about your friends. Do you have a friend that's always up to something? Some project? They're working on a song, or they're making videos. They finish one thing and they start another. Well, if you wonder how they stay motivated, it's because they're always working on something. And this goes back to taking action. If you're not learning or working, you can't stay motivated. So you need to apply this to language learning. How? For example, like I mentioned in part two about outside influence, you can make a plan to travel to a country that speaks your target language. Or you can sign up for a language proficiency test. If you do that, you'll have something to look forward to, something to do. If you're traveling, you need to learn travel phrases. If you have a proficiency test coming up, you have to study grammar and do exercises. What else can you do? If you already have a textbook or workbook, make it a goal to finish that book. If you have a learning program, make it a goal to finish it or reach a certain level. If you're using our lessons, make it a goal to finish one learning pathway. Then, when you're done, give yourself something else to do, something to stick with, something to look forward to. So, let's recap. One, action comes first. Two, always have an outside influence. Three, always have a go-to study method. And four, always be working on something. So, thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about how to get a return on your language learning investment. If you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. And if you're ready to finally learn language the fast, fun, and easy way, and start speaking from your very first lesson, get our complete learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account right now. Click the link in the description. See you next time. Bye. Expand your vocabulary with our core 2000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free Cantonese ebook before it's gone.